So the first feature premiere for MLB The Show 21 just happened on San Diego Studios Twitch page and we got a deeper dive into some of the new features coming to the game such as pinpoint pitching. They also talked a little bit about the new gameplay styles and of course with every stream they're most likely going to reveal a legend and we got a good one today. I'm going to let you guys know everything you need to know so if you want to keep up with all the MLB The Show 21 news as it's coming out make sure to hit that sub button. I got you covered. This is the place to be but let's jump into it. I'll start it off just with the legend to get that out of the way because everybody wants to see the new legends. We finally got our first one confirmed and it was a pretty epic troll job. Check this out. Yeah, y'all thought it was probably gonna be Jeter at first, huh? Hey, Soriano is dope though. He's been a guy that a lot of people in the community have been asking for. You could do multiple teams with a card of his. Soriano is gonna be sick. He's gonna be a very fun card to use. I'm excited. We finally got our first official legend confirmed. So that's fun. We can be excited about that. But let's talk about the actual features and the gameplay and the stuff they talked about in this video. A majority of this video focused on the new pitching mechanic, which is gonna be called Pinpoint Pitching. And this is the one we saw a couple weeks ago on the first coach video where it basically looked like MLB 2K's pitching meter. Now there's obviously more that meets the eye and if you played the tech test you kind of saw a little bit of how this new mechanic worked and it's definitely a learning curve but I'm gonna let this clip play where they explain it a little bit and I'll give my thoughts and my opinions on it as well. So the first thing you're gonna notice as you aim your pitch that arrow and circle on the bottom will move left or right in relation to the ball placement within the zone and this location will be important when you finish your pitching motion. Next you're gonna see the preview inside the interface each pitch type has a distinct motion that needs to be performed at the same speed as the preview. That's super important. You gotta perform that pitch gesture motion at the same speed as the preview, which correlates to the pitch motion of the pitcher on the mound. So that's a really cool aspect because it's going to change from pitcher to pitcher. And so your performance executing this input is known as the gesture rating. And then after you begin that motion, you're gonna see some timing mechanics pop up. And this is a really nuanced part of this interface. So you're definitely gonna wanna pay attention to the way it works. So this timing mechanic as you begin your motion pops up at the 12 o'clock position and all of your pitches will finish at this 12 o'clock position. The gears you'll notice are blue. They'll begin to rotate and start to close in on one another in an effort to help you keep the right timing with your motion. Your ideal timing for a perfect timing would be when those rings are overlapped on one another. It, giving the appearance that there's really just one ring there. You'll notice some dynamically colored feedback along the way that will help you keep pace as well. We're trying to give you as many possible ways to make sure that you have perfect timing. Green is good on time. Yellow means that you need to slow down a little bit and red means you're failing. Right, so timing is key here. And when you pick your pitch, mm -hmm. it's gonna start to cycle so you can get that timing down. So we're gonna give you that preview of the timing that you're trying to match, right? Right, and it's, it's definitely not an easy thing to master. This is definitely a more experienced, a more competitive mechanic, but one that rewards you because of that. Once you get that 12 o'clock position, there's gonna be another timing mechanic that shows up exactly where you placed your arrow and circle at the bottom just before executing your pitch. Again, the ideal timing is when those rings overlap or the appearance is just one ring. And so the execution of this release pit will be known as your release timing. And again, a really cool factor in this is that each pitcher has a distinct pitch timing and motion. And so Kershaw in his windup, you're gonna have to sit a little bit at the top and it's gonna take a little bit of patience and trial and error. Whereas someone coming straight out of the stretch is gonna be a quick like one second. So it's gonna take something to match but that's exactly what we were looking for out of it. Okay, and the gestures change per pitch type, correct? Correct. Uh, fastball, four seam fastball, straight up and down being the easiest with all of the other off speeds having intricate motions. And this is where the strategy comes in, right? And what we're trying to really replicate here is what's happening on the mound in real life where nine times out of 10, a guy's best pitch is his fastball, right? Absolutely. That's gonna be the easiest pitch he can throw and locate. Mm -hmm. And then as you're going down the line, those secondary pitches gets a little bit dicier. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And when you get down to that, so the, the gesture for the curveball is probably the hardest. Actually, is the gesture for the curveball the hardest? It is one of the hardest.
guess I'd, I think I'd have to go with Splitter or maybe, yeah, no, it would be the Splitter for sure. It's definitely the toughest. Okay, all right, so Splitter's the toughest, all right. Oh, by far. And, and another aspect of Pinpoint that's pretty cool is if you think of a pitcher in real life, they have a lot of things that they're trying to think about. Their pitch grip, you know, runners on base if possible, trying to keep themselves in sync and in time. And so that's exactly what you're trying to do on the mound. You're trying to manage all these inputs while executing a pitch correctly. And I can tell you from experience, I'm, I'm pitching a phenomenal game and I have to switch pitchers in the seventh or eighth with a guy with a quicker windup. And I find myself, you know, uh oh, I'm like, I'm relearning it for a pitch or two. And that's, it's a really cool aspect of this uh, interface. Yeah, pitching at the major leagues is very hard. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah, get good, was, get good. That's what those guys. <laughs> Big bucks. Yeah. So, so I know that might sound kind of overwhelming and it might not fully make sense, especially if you didn't play the tech test. But as somebody who played it and somebody who spent a couple hours with it trying to get it down, I'm telling you, when you finally get the hang of this new feature, it's going to make pitching very nice. It is definitely a learning curve and it's definitely something that's going to take some time getting used to, especially considering there's a lot of pitchers that have different timing and different wind up motions. And there's going to be a bunch of little variables in there. But I'm telling you, when you get it down, this is going to be the way to pitch, especially in a competitive online environment, which is what I play. And they actually did a little bit of gameplay with it as well. Check this out. All right. So we are jumping into gameplay here, looking at Snailzilla pitching in that great new San Diego Padres uniform. So we have swing analysis. We also have pitch analysis. Or is it even called pitch analysis, Kyle? Yeah. You, you know what? You can call it pitch analysis, Simone. Well, I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. So what is pitch analysis? <laughs> what are we looking at that's popping up on the left side of the gesture okay so what you're seeing in descending order is your gesture accuracy grade your release timing grade and your direction grade each box will change colors dynamically depending on your result with green being good yellow okay and red is failed and we're trying to give you as many possible ways to absorb this information whether it be colors or actual numbers to interpret how you're doing and performing the mechanic right and so in that top accuracy box you're gonna see that we display your percentage accuracy for performing that specific gesture. There's some different thresholds between fastballs and off speeds that you can be aware of. In that second box is our timing portion and we're displaying within hundreds of a second and we let you know if you're early or late. And, oh, and I should also take note on the accuracy portion. We also do let you know if you're going too fast or too slow. So another chance for you to see how you're performing on that mechanic. Right. So as you're pitching in real time, we're giving you feedback so you can get better in real time as you're trying to strike guys out and induce ground and fly balls, right? Mm -hmm. You got it, you got it. And then that bottom portion right there is your direction grade and will tell you how many degrees off you were of your intended target. Right, and was that a perfect, perfect I saw? Is that perfect, perfect pitching now? There is perfect, perfect pitching. Is it perfect, perfect pitching and only pinpoint or does it transfer to the other interfaces? Nope, hey, that's, that's par for you. We got it on all three of those, pinpoint, analog, and meter. That is awesome. And again, yes, pinpoint pitching is the most complicated. It has the biggest learning curve, mm -hmm. but it is also the most accurate. So the best competitors in MLB to show 21, this is the pitching interface you're going to want to try to master, right? Totally. It definitely is. It, it, it comes with its challenges, but it rewards you because of them. So, you know, I'm using it. I'll tell you that. So you see how it works. You see the different pitches they were throwing. Each pitch has its own unique little motion. And there's a lot of moving parts that are going through this new pitching mechanic. But one thing that you might have noticed during that is the person controlling the pitching was getting some perfect, perfect pitching releases. Obviously, perfect, perfect hitting was added into the game this past year. It was, in my opinion, a pretty good improvement. But as people were playing the game, a lot of us couldn't help but think, man, if we have perfect, perfect hitting, it'd be really nice to have perfect pitching as well. And that's huge because you guys know, you play the game, you know sometimes when you're using something like analog, you could hit your spot pretty close to where you need it to go, and it'll kind of just float, or like a, a changeup won't drop, a curveball doesn't have great break. It just feels like there's a lot of randomness when it comes to the pitching in this game. Game, and in theory, this should help. So obviously there is a lot to talk about with pinpoint pitching and you know, you can break it down as much as you can, but it's just going to make a lot more sense to you when you actually get your hands on the game and you're able to pitch with it. So it's definitely something I'm excited for. It's definitely something that I'm going to be using. Now they did briefly touch on check swings as well, because check swings were obviously a big problem for 
MLB The Show 20. And basically what they said is that check swings this year are going to be way less forgiving. So if you're a guy who likes to check your swing on a ton of pitches, you're probably going to get called for more strikes this year. And they also said that they took discipline out of the equation so that no longer will have an impact on the ability to check your swing. That all sounds great to me because... You know, sometimes when you have the ability to just check your swing whenever you want to, there's no reason to have an actual approach at the plate. It's just all pure reactions. You know, you're not really looking to hit a fastball or anything like that. It's just all pure reaction at that point. So with check swings being called more for strikes, that should make it a little bit better. And they also briefly touched on the new gameplay styles, the casual simulation and competitive, but we kind of understand what that means. Casual is a pickup and play experience. Simulation is a simulation Major League Baseball experience and competitive is head-to-head -head user stick skills user input matters most so there's not really a lot to break down there and the last thing I want to touch on in this video breaking down this feature premiere is the improvements to custom practice custom practice is a really cool mode where you can go and basically put any situation you want on the field and you can hit or pitch with that situation live the cool things they've added this year though is that if you're going to batting practice you can actually choose exactly which pitches you want to see in which location location from any pitcher in the game. So if you're having trouble hitting high and away fastballs from Araldis Chapman, jump in custom practice, put Chapman on the mound, put the high and away fastball active, and that is the pitch you will see over and over and over again. Great addition. We've been asking for that for a while. Very, very underrated. And that's pretty much it for this feature premiere. There might be some things in there that I didn't cover fully, but I'm leaving a link to the stream down in the description of this video if you want to check out it all for yourself. I do hope you guys enjoyed my breakdown. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Let me know in the comments what you think about pinpoint pitching, what you think about uh, any of the other pitching improvements. Do you think perfect, perfect pitching is going to actually work? Or are you excited for check swings being called more? Let me know in the comments what you think. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, hit that sub button, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.